Today's Gospel, John chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. Jesus said, I am the bread of, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of God, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and then drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood Abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Our gospel for today. Please be seated. Sometimes I feel that... uh, Nothing could get more confusing and cumbersome than a guy named Pastor Mike. But listen, we come to worship and sing praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So grace and peace be to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth. Amen. The Apostle Paul, in our second reading today, wanted the people of the promise not to get drunk from the spirits of the world. If a person would shop at a liquor store, they would probably be shopping for beer, wine, or hard liquor, and as they shop for those thirst winchers, know that there is another word to define them, and that word is spirits. Some of those spirits, they can be mighty good tasting, can't they? But unfortunately, If a person is not careful, if a person is not careful, those liquor store spirits can have some bad effects on life, we know. It can cause poor judgment in so many ways. Maybe maybe you've heard this phrase, the spirits are about to speak. This is not just a caution about liquor today, but that which tempts you away from living in the faith of God in Jesus Christ. Watch out and be on your guard. Watch out and be on your guard. And this is why Paul drew attention to those liquor store spirits as an example of faithless living. Because liquor store spirits can bring about something called 
debauchery. By the way, that's, that's sin. It's missing the mark of faithful living. Paul wanted to compare this unfortunate life with a different spirit. That spirit is the spirit of God in Jesus Christ. This is a spirit that calls us to incorporate an existence that sees, knows, and breathes a very special life into our life. A transformation occurs in a person as they consume God's spirit in Jesus. This is an existence in the transformation that centers a person's life in Jesus with prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And I will always pray that Bethel always understand that living in Christian faith is living in the faith of God's Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Because when we live in the faith of God's Spirit, we feast in, with, and under Jesus Christ. This is a feast. This is a feast that has a proclamation for us to hear the good news of God in Jesus Christ. Every week at worship, and this, this is a feast that shares Jesus Christ in a holy communion. A Holy Communion is the time we are reassured, reassured with a precious visual, a precious visual of what we are being told about. Holy Communion is the time we are supported with a special touch as we hold to the promise of Jesus. I have to repeat that. Holy Communion is the time we are supported with a special touch as we hold to the promise of Jesus the bread of life. This feast is not a magical formula for us to be with God. No, it is not. It is a mystery given and shed for the world with a promise that we are with God. With a promise that we are with God. A promise that creates faith, a promise that strengthens faith, and then a promise that feeds faith. This is all done as a person lives one in God with Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't do this in the way that the likes of those liquor spirits do this. No, the Holy Spirit does not. But rather, the Holy Spirit does this through life in Jesus so that, so 
What is it like? For we, for we who live in this spirit of God in Jesus Christ. One, we listen to Jesus and we touch Jesus. And as a result, then we pray to Jesus. Two, we listen to Jesus and we touch Jesus. And then we sing praises to Jesus. Three, we listen to Jesus and we touch Jesus. And then we give thanks as a result to Jesus. Four, we listen to Jesus and we touch Jesus. And as a result, we then are sent out into the world with a holy communion in Jesus. Five, we listen to Jesus and we touch Jesus. And as a result, we live in the faith of God, in Jesus Christ, with, with the world, with the world. And if this isn't enough, then God, then God lets us sleep in his arms. Then God lets us sleep in his arms until he wakes us with a kiss. Until he wakes us with a kiss. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in that kiss of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Helen, Will you play some music so we can stand and sing with you? Mm -hmm. 